Assalamu alaikum viewers and uh, welcome to the series of program of organization and management of MBA Kohl. Today is the 12th episode of this program. Uh, I am your host Komal and with me I have the expert Mr. Say Chaudhary. Welcome sir. Thank you. Uh, viewers, uh, before discussing today's topic, I would first want the expert to go through what we studied in the last episode, which was definitely, as you must be knowing, organizational culture and control. Sir? We studied organizational culture, determinants of organizational culture, monitoring and control, control systems, types of control, control process, the goal setting process, organizational control system, input control system, and output control system. Thank you, sir. Uh, now, viewers, coming to today's topic, as you all know, what we are going to study today is power and politics in an organization. As you all know, that uh, almost in every part of the world, politics is involved, but how it affects an organization how it works in an organization, we are going to ask our expert. Yes, sir. What is power? Reward power, coercive power, legitimate power, process power, information power, referent power, power and leadership, using power, and building position power. These are the various kinds of power that we will be studying today. Mm -hmm. Research in various organizations have shown that power is a process and power is a disposition and power is also a procedure. And the use of power is more important because it is actually linked not only to management, mm -hmm but also to the ethics. Mm -hmm. Ethics of running a business is actually ethics of using power in business mm -hmm. because a manager has to manage and therefore he has to run the business successfully and there comes the use of power mm -hmm. and also empowerment. But we must remember here, while empowerment is actually sharing power with others, mm -hmm. but there is no empowerment without responsibility mm -hmm. and without accountability. Research after Second World War has shown that there are various questions in the minds of people who are obeying or who are, so to say, subordinates, because the research has shown that they not only want to obey, but they question why are they obeying? Why are they are so condescending? And what is the ethicality of the use of power by the managers? Mm -hmm. So these are the questions which actually should also be in the mind of the manager because he has to use power and he has to in a way answer this question to the people in practice, why are they obeying him? This is because power is making people do what a manager wants them to do. And that also has an element of leadership to which we'll be coming later on. Sir, how do organizational politics affect managers and management? There's one other question I wanted to ask that can the firm use polit politics strategically? Actually, the politics is used strategically and managers are not only part of that politics, mm -hmm. but they are the dominant players in that politics. The politics of organization is how power is being used. Mm -hmm. And as I was saying earlier, it's not only a question of making people do what the organization wants them to do to achieve organizational objectives, but also 
indirectly answer the question why people are doing what they are doing why are they obeying why are they following the procedures that have been told and that have been circulated through uh, in-house manuals mm -hmm. this is because the people and the managers together are part of an organization and they have joint interest in following the rules and regulations and thus letting the manager exercise his power because they are jointly achieving objectives of the organization and during this game of doing business and making people do what the manager wants them to do mm -hmm. they there is an interaction and uh, there is a certain influence that a manager wields on his uh, workers mm -hmm. or subordinates and other supervisors and that is why he as a manager has also to interact with other managers and they are also exercising their authority at that time and this is what makes them jointly mm -hmm. exercise their powers harmoniously all right. viewers all of us uh, like power but what exactly power is in practice and how do we know that a manager has power sir as everybody know mm -hmm. this power this influence comes from the position of the manager and what is position power position power derives from organizational sources the types of position power are reward power coercive power legitimate power process power information power and representative power sir is that what you call position power yes of course we'll uh, tackle these in detail a little later but for the time being briefly as you know a reward power power of rewarding a uh, manager can reward good workers but uh, reward is not all the time used it's used rarely and it's used appropriately coercive power is what some people feel is mostly used because it is coercing the people or forcing the people to work and as you might have studied in your general management course there is an x theory and there is a y theory mm -hmm. and according to x theory people do not work unless they are forced to work so that is that theory highlights coercive power and legitimate power is the power that is given to a manager according to the rules and regulations of that particular company of which he or she is the manager and uh, process power is actually a very beautiful concept it's a concept of a manager that knows the process mm -hmm. technically inside out and thus can impress others by his technical knowledge knowledge of production or service or whatever business they are doing and uh, information power is a new concept mm -hmm. since information technology arose and since the information held sway in the business field it is felt that people who have more information they wield a certain sort of power they have edge over others and they thus being more informed they have more influence representative power is the power of uh, being a representative of a group or an organization or a team so uh, if a person is made representative he is or she is the representative and thus has the power of uh, negotiation with other people on that basis what sort of rewards normally managers use good question reward is actually is something that uh, incites a uh, person to repeat 
a, a certain behavior. This means that good behavior, if rewarded, will be repeated. And uh, similarly, it's a part of motivation. But it must be used very intelligently because if people feel that they are given some other basis of productivity, but rewards are being distributed on some other basis, that will in a way create discontent among them. Number two, the reward must be valent. That is a reward that a person must like. If he doesn't like that reward or it's of no use to him, perhaps that reward will not be effective. So the rewards are to be given at appropriate time and with appropriate clarity and also to uh, make it clear upon the people why this reward is being given to certain people All right. and why it is not given to others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is the theory of reward. Mm -hmm. Sir, I gather here that if a manager can give a reward, he can also cut the reward or further if we go, he can also punish. Is that right? That is right. And it's right in another way. Denial of reward can also be considered a sort of negative reinforcement. And while talking of rewards, let me make it clear that rewards may be extrinsic or intrinsic, and they may be monetary or non-monetary. Mm -hmm. As you can see, extrinsic rewards are those which are of material nature. All right. And intrinsic rewards are related to um, psychology, mm -hmm. mental makeup of a person, or his or her motivations. And uh, therefore, we may not consider the reward always uh, sort of uh, something material or in monetary terms. It may be given in terms of appreciation, a pat on the back, mm -hmm. or any honorable mention, commendation, or a letter of appreciation. A clap, maybe, sir? Yeah, sure. In a, a certain gathering, that is also considered uh, a reward. Mm -hmm. So these are the rewards. And uh, as you were asking about uh, coercive power, now this uh, reward power, in a way, on the other side of the coin is the power to punish people mm -hmm. or to deny them rewards. And nearly the same principles apply. If a manager issues a reprimand or uh, he thinks that uh, a certain uh, person must not be given reward or monetary benefit, it should be proportionate to the fault of the person. It should be given at the appropriate time and it should be very clear and why this is being done. So that is another negative, but a negative way of uh, uh, motivating the people. It's a sort of negative reinforcement. That is to make people desist from uh, undesirable behavior mm -hmm. in their production or in their services. Now, viewers, there